Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. This is where the Clampets live, but there ain't no one in. Cause they went home for Christmas and a visit with their kin. And here they are arriving at the home they love the best. Happy as a pack of squirrels returning to their nest. Why, Thunder Grant, the old place ain't changed a bit. Pretty as ever. Prettier with the snow. Excuse me, Paul, but I got some friends to say hi to. Yes, sir. They just don't make houses like this no more. <laughs> sure don't make them in Beverly Hill. I'll go get the bags, Uncle Jed. Reckon they just can't get wood like this. My grandpa chopped down the trees and built this all by hand. You say your grandfather built this cabin? He sure did. Oh, he must have been a remarkable man. He sure was. He finished the cabin in the morning, went to town, found a girl, Courted her, married her, and carried her across that doorstep all before sundown. <laughs> Tell me, Granny, was that 18 and 97 or 18 and 98? 18 and 98. Yeah, that's right. She was 18 and Grandpa was 98. <laughs> you say he was 98 and his bride was 18? That's right. Marriage didn't work out too good. So <laughs> I don't doubt it. Yeah, Grandpa made the mistake of having his ma come live with him. <laughs> Awful bossy old woman. Wouldn't let that little bride do nothing. Did everything herself. <laughs> Your uh, family has remarkable longevity. No. Yeah, they, they, they stretch the truth a little, too. Oh? Grandpa was the day over 90 when he married that girl. <laughs> and his ma didn't bust up the marriage. That poor little bride just wore out, having so many young'uns to take care of. <laughs> oh, uh, what, uh, what happened to Ellie Mae? Well, she just went to say howdy to some of her friends. Maggie? Maggie, it's me, Ellie Mae. I've come back to visit you. Ooh. You, Henry. Ooh. Right now, I'm looking for Maggie. You seen her? You're supposed to be so doggone wise. Where is she? Ooh. Well, Davy Crockett. Say, so you're looking bushy as ever. What's the matter? What you scared of? Don't you remember me? Please, Davy, don't run away. Oh, hi, Mr. Beaver. It's me, Ellie. What you kicking snow at me for? Oh, please, Mr. Beaver. Come back. Hi, Mr. Foxy. It's me, Ellie. Come back. Clampett, I certainly appreciate your letting me use your cabin as a field headquarters. I've got a few things in the bedroom. I'll, I'll get them out. No need for you to do that, Mr. Brewster. We're just going to be here a couple of days. Granny and Ellie can you know, use the bedroom, and you and me can kind of curl up here in front of the fire. Well, that's my kind of you, Mr. Clampett. But I'll find a place to stay in town. Well, no need for you to drive all that way through the snow. Why, you're here, you're by the oil field, and uh, Granny cooks up a big meal that really sticks to your rib. What you cooking in the bar, Granny? My special Christmas holiday vittle. We'll start with red cabbage and green turnip tops, swimming with sorghum. <laughs> then what I call my heavenly hash. That's grits, and chitlins, possum belly, hog jowl, and cabbage. 
all minced together and simmered in gopher gravy. <laughs> Post talking. Mm. Now there's vittles you won't forget in a hurry. I'll try. What do you say, Mr. Brewster? Roar's too hard, we'll get some uh, pine boughs and ashes for you to sleep on. Well, I, uh, I think I'll go into town. Thank you very much. Excuse me. What's the matter with you two asking him to stay here? You want me to be a widow all my life? I was going to offer him my spare room. You ain't got no spare room, Pearl. I have if Jethro stays here. <laughs> if Mr. Brewster stays with you and Jethreen, won't, won't people talk? I hope so. <laughs> Jed can insist on him marrying me. I'm going to get him. Now's my chance. I can hold with making a man get married unless he wants to. He wants to? Why, that man's so in love with me, he can't eat. Yeah, but are you in love with him, Pearl? Oh, Jed, when I'm near him, I feel like my feet is dangling in a creek and the minnows is biting at my toes. <laughs> That's what you call really being in love. <laughs> Help her, Jed. Mrs. Bodine, if you'd like a ride into town, I can drop you off on my way to the hotel. Hotel? Why, you, you can't stay there. Oh, no, sir. You sure can't. Why not? Why not, Jed? Uh, why not, Pearl? Why not? <laughs> There's a convention there. Yeah. Every room in that hotel is full up. They're packed in there like crowds in a jar. What kind of convention? Uh, elf convention. <laughs> that that hotel is bulging with elf. Oh, well, perhaps I can find a room in a boarding house. Huh. You know anybody got a spare room, Granny? No, I don't. Do you, Jed? Well, I see now. The uh, only spare room I know of around here is over to your house, Pearl. Why, land to mercy, I plumb for God, yes! <laughs> My spare room! What spare room, Ma? We ain't got it. Ow! <laughs> Why don't you run out and fetch some wood? I just brought some wood in. What spare room, Ma? We ain't got no spare room. Ow! Uh, you just run along outside and get the kinks out of that leg. I ain't got no kinks in my leg. It's just that Ma just keeps out. Son, if you're gonna play hopscotch, you go outside. I'll sign for playing games. But I ain't playing games. Then go chop me some wood. I just chop some wood. <laughs> chop her some green wood. She wants to smoke a possum now. Here. I just chop some wood and I put it right there. I just put it right around the corner. Now you come to my house, Mr. Brewster. The spare room is yours. Well, all right. If it's not, why should I sleep here on the floor? I got a room. Ow! <laughs> He's given decisions in the leg, ain't he, Granny? I'll have him rub it with some hot possum grease tonight. Yeah. Well, let's get going. Uh, Aunt Pearl, would you do me a big favor? Well, of course, Daddy May. What is it? Would you take this year fur coat? Your mink? For, for keeps? I sure would appreciate it. It makes my friends in the woods kind of skittish. They must reckon I'll be wearing them next. <laughs> well, I don't rightly know if hey, I Go should... ahead and take it, Pearl. That is, if you don't mind, it's been war once or twice before. Oh, not at all. I tell you what. I'll put it in one of my hope chests, and I'll uh, wear it on my honeymoon. Say, Mr. Clampett, isn't that an awful big tree that, that Jethro's chopping down? Hey, he's notching it on the wrong side, too. Hey, Jethro! Quit notching that tree on this side. It's liable to fall right down on the gear. Look out, everybody! Oh, 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 oh. It missed us. Please, Lord. Well, the tree missed. We can get up now. Well, he, he might be chopping another one. Let's wait and see. <laughs> and get her for me, I'll give you something shiny. What would you like? How about this? Okay? There. Go find Maggie. Nellie. Well, hi there, Nellie. It's me, Ellie. It's a good thing you didn't see me in that mink coat. You might have got riled at 
One friend I don't want, Riley, it's you. <laughs> Maggie, I knew Freddie would find you. Maggie, I'm so happy to see you. I told you I'd come and visit you, and here I am. Ellie? Ellie me, where are you? Over here, Paul. Now, don't you be scared of Paul. He won't hurt you none. Well, now, who's this? This here's my old friend, Maggie. You remember her? Sure I do. Howdy, Maggie. Say, Ellie, we's all going over to Aunt Pearl's for supper. And after supper, we's all going over to that movie picture theater where Pearl works. Well, I'd heap rather stay here. Well, Pearl says he's going to be a brand new picture from Hollywood called, uh, Ben-Hur. Who's in it? According to Pearl, it's got the two biggest actors there is, Francis X. Bushman and Raymond Navarro. <laughs> Stay here, Paul. Now, we's all supposed to kind of surround Mr. Brewster and brag on Pearl's piano playing during the picture. Well, Jethro can brag extra for me. Jethro ain't gonna be there. He just sat there all night and complained about Mr. Brewster having his room. Oh, come on, Ellie. Don't you want to help Pearl get a husband? Okay, Paul. Bye, Maggie. Well, Paul, ain't you gonna kiss Maggie goodbye? I don't reckon so. Uh, her husband might not like it. <laughs> Come on, Ellie. Come on, everybody. <laughs> well, doggy. Get three. Here's a picture of your mom. Yeah, it says, in person, Pearl Bodine, Wizard of the Keyboard. Oh, that means Piani. Hey, your name is as big as Ben Hur's. Oh, I begged the manager not to put that up, but he says it's a drawing card. My playing during the picture. During the picture? Don't you have sound? Loads of it. Between the people crunching popcorn and frying and reading the titles out loud, you got plenty of sound. <laughs> Everybody go on in and sit down. You're all on complimentary passes. <laughs> now, I gotta pop some corn and sell tickets before I come in and play the overture. <laughs> Mr. Brewster, did you ever in all your born days see a woman who could do more things than my cousin Pearl? She can cook, sew, keep house, play piano, and no wonder the men around here are just beating her door down to propose. But Pearl's choicey. She's waiting for the right man. Here comes Aunt Pearl. L ladies and gentlemen, before our big premiere gets underway, I know you'll want to meet the celebrities in our audience tonight. Now, a setting right here in the front row from Tulsa, Oklahoma, is the field manager of the OK Oil Company, bought my cousin Ted Swamp, Mr. John Brewster. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that tomato. Come on. <laughs> Homer Winch, get up there and you clean off that screen right now. Ain't you shamed? Yeah, Pearl, but I couldn't help myself. I'm just eat up with jealousy. I seen red. Well, I see it too, so clean off the movie screen. Ben Hur will look like he's bleeding before the chariot race ever starts. <laughs> I'm when you're mad, Pearl. Get out there, you coot. <laughs> and, and now, folks, you're gonna meet a Real live millionaire and his family all the way from Beverly Hills, California. Your friends and my kinfolk, the Clampets. <laughs> Jed, Granny, Ellie Mae. Folks, uh, mighty nice to be back here with you again. And, uh, you all invited to come visit us in Beverly Hills. Got plenty of room, and uh, Granny will wamp up a mess of heavenly hash for you. Jim, 
Can I show him my mink coat? Sure, Granny. This here is a genuine mink coat. <laughs> Give it to me by the banker. Nobody get the wrong idea. There ain't no strings attached. I'm still the same sweet girl I was when I left here. <laughs> I got a real big surprise for you. As you know, those that can read, the picture for tonight is Ben Hur, and I have wrote and composed a special song in honor of the chariot race, which is the most exciting part of the picture. And this here special song is going to be sung by my daughter, Death Reed. Say goodbye, Death Reed. <laughs> the song will be sung in its entirety during the chariot race, and you can all join in the chorus. Uh, but seeing that Homer Winch ain't got the tomato off the screen yet, <laughs> Jeff Green will give you a little sample right now. <laughs> we invite your kind attention to the advertisements which will appear on the screen. I thank you. All right, Charlie! at a city dude. Hush up. When well, them fellas ain't nothing but a bunch of playboys. Just like bees flitting from flower to flower, grabbing up the honey. And then when your petals is drooping, they fly away. Everybody can hear you. I ain't ashamed of what I got to say. I love Pearl Bodine. Hush up, Homer. Now, quiet down, Homer. You're making Pearl blush. Be my blushing bride, Pearl. Right here before your kinfolk, your neighbors, and Ben-Hur. I'm asking you to marry me. Get up off your knees. You're making a spectacle of yourself. I, I, I caught him, Ma. I caught him. I sneaking out the door, and I caught him. I was not sneaking. I, I simply went outside for a breath of fresh air. Put him down. You uh, wasn't running away, was you, Mr. Brewster? No, of course not. <laughs> Everybody's invited over to my house for apple cider. <laughs> Jed, you too, Jethro. Come on now, get out from underfoot, both of you. Hey, we 
we was up late last night. Yeah, Granny, we want to sleep. It ain't what you want that makes you fat, it's what you get. <laughs> Getting up on that floor. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Yeah, that's cold. Well, when I say get, you get. Floor is cold and hard. Ah, uh, you're getting soft from city life. Now get dressed, and get washed, and get packed. Packed? You heard what I said. I ain't gonna spend another night in this place. Not with that wild daughter of yourn. I didn't sleep a wink. Appears to me like you're getting a mite soft from city living, too. Time was when you never minded sharing a bed with Ellie Mae. I still don't mind sharing a bed with Ellie Mae, but I draw the line when it comes to sharing with them others. What others? Well, there was an owl and a squirrel, a crow and a fox, a possum and a skunk and a porcupine. Well, I'll go in and speak to Ellie Mae. I wouldn't go in there if I were you unless you want them flannels took right off you. What are you talking about? You know where my mink coat is right now? Where? In the top of a tree. Full of baby eagles. <laughs> Their mama and me fought for nigh on to ten minutes for that coat. But with them claws on her, she could get a better purchase on it. She took it right out the window. You've been at your rheumatism medicine. I ain't about to swallow no story about Uncle a Uncle Jack, eagle. Granny, a great big old eagle just snatched the hat right off my head. <laughs> See what I told you? When a mama eagle wants to keep her babies warm, she'll grab anything. Somebody better help Ellie Mae hang on to her blankets. Cause that rascal just flew in her window. <laughs> Frida, you hadn't ought to took Jethro's hat. <laughs> Never mind about Jethro's hat. Ask her to bring back Granny's mink coat. <laughs> Only if she wants to. <laughs> Frida, you bring back Granny's mink coat. And if she's took any suitcases, see if you can get them back too. We's packing up. <laughs> Excuse me. Good morning, Pearl. Oh, well, Winch, I told you and I told you, don't come into my house without I invite you. I happen to be here in my official capacity as a jitney driver. Not no jitney. Well, Mr. Brewster does. <laughs> don't say nothing to Mr. Brewster, and I'll bake you two pies. Pearl? Only one way you can seal my lips and stop my jitney. And that's with a smack. All right. You all know I said that, can. I mean, with a kiss. A kiss? That's my price. Take it or leave it. Homer, why, that's the most shocking, disgusting, insulting, disgraceful. Oh, Mr. Brute. <laughs> Earth? Where'd you go, Pearl? <laughs> Ma's coming, and boy, is she a drive. She must have heard we's leaving. Without getting her married to Mr. Brewster. I reckon we's in for considerable balling. Ain't nobody can outcry Ma when she commences to gushing. <laughs> Pearl? I reckon you's heard. We's going back to Beverly Hills. <laughs> oh, now, Pearl, you's bawling already. Uh, don't worry, Pearl. You'll get a feller. Yeah, come on back to Beverly Hills with us. I can't. All right, Pearl, all right. I can't fight a woman's tears. We'll stay here until you marry, Mr. Brewster. Yeah, Ma, and, and I'll be your best man. <laughs> and you can wear that beautiful mink coat on your honeymoon. <laughs> Pearl, what are you crying about now? The mink coat. What about it? I was driving down the road and a great big eagle took it right out of my lap. Don't you worry. Ellie Mae! Yeah, Pop? You shinny up that tree and tell that grabby eagle to give you back that mink coat for Pearl's honeymoon or she ain't no friend of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Only if she wants to, of course. <laughs> Now 
now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.